Come on in, Facebook. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in, Facebook. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Come on in, Facebook. Amen. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. Amen. We're just so glad. This is the Brinson Connection, the Brinson Institute, and we're just glad another time, the same time every Wednesday from this two to three hour to come on and be with you and share with you today. And each and every Wednesday at this hour, I am your host, Apostle Dr. Sylvester Paul Brinson III of the Brinson Institute and the Brinson Connection. We're excited about what God is doing with us and all of those that of you that have been in contact with us and reaching to us and responding to us. We're just so thankful for you that have been calling us and, and uh, uh, God bless you, Evangelist Williams. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And those who are coming on now, we're just glad that God is good. And uh, Sister Buchanan, God bless you, our graphics designer. Amen. Praise God. Uh, and so we are just excited about what God is doing. So many things has been happening. We had a great Sunday school lesson today. And for those of you that are studying the Sunday school lesson uh, on the international version, uh, we so we're having a great time. Sister Rita. Wigfall, God bless you again, woman of God, being with us again on this day. Amen. We have been studying. I want to take some time out and, and just share with you bits and pieces of last week's Sunday school lesson and this week's Sunday school lesson, some highlights from our lesson on Joseph. It's been inspiring to me, very inspiring. And uh, I want you to be exi excited about that. And uh, we'll be talking more before we get off on the revised edition of our book Iniquities, the sins of the father of the sins of the father today we're excited because now you can pick it up and it's available on amazon.com amazon.com you can go and get our book god bless you and we're just so happy and excited for our publicists uh and our graphic artist uh evangelist sherry buchanan cheetos go to her and those of you that are that God has touched and you have a book and it, you, it needs to be published. Uh, you need the cover. You need graphics on the book. Well, Brent said, I've got a book in me and I've been writing and I need somebody to edit my book and I need somebody. Hey, give me a call at 773-616-1951. 773-616-1951. I will connect you with my publisher. She is excellent. She is excellent, excellent, excellent. She'll get look at your stuff, work it out, edit it, get your copyright, your ISBN number. Uh, you need a cover design. You need a design. She's in graphic art. She would do your cover as well. Those of you that need a good graphic artist, uh, you need somebody that spirit feel, understand what God is doing. And you, you know, you need some flyers done. You need some brochures done. Any kind of work of that of that type, she does that as well. So not only to do and do logos and do all kinds of graphics, she's a graphic artist, extra premier, extra ordinaire. And so if you need a book published, flyers, brochures, or whatever you need in the area of graphics, give me a call. In fact, you can reach out, reach out to her on Facebook uh, Cherie, S H I R R I, Cherie Buchanan, B U C H A N A N, Cherie Buchanan. Look for her on Facebook. She's on Facebook. Amen. Tap into her. Amen. And she will, uh, be glad. Apostle Barbara Davis, God bless you, woman of God. Uh, my spiritual son, my apostolic son, and get, and get me in trouble with Bishop, my apostolic son, Apostle Desmond Charles Battles. God bless you. And keep you is my prayer. All of you that are watching us and those who are yet tapping in all the way in Africa, all over the world. We're just so glad of what God is doing in the land on today, in the land on today. So we'll be talking about that. I just want to touch bases with you because I just did hear from a uh, uh, woman of God, Elder Joseph Allen Sledge. God bless you, Elder Sledge. I just heard from them that we've been waiting for our second printing because we did put out uh, a small book, just a small one, an informational book. 
very informational. You need to know about the sins of the fathers, iniquity, sins of the fathers, and the bloodline curse and the bloodline blessing. That, uh, that was a revised edition, a new published edition. It is now on Amazon.com. It's now on Zam Amazon, and it will be in other areas, but today it, it, it hit, and it's on Amazon. You can order your copy. I'm going to be talking a little bit about iniquities as we talk about the story of Joseph on today. I want to get into the Sunday school lesson. Patrick Schaefer, man of God. Amen. I honor you, man of God. I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. I honor you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Elder Sledge. I want to talk today, last week and this week, we've entered a new Sunday school lesson time frame. And this, for those of you that study by the International Sunday School Lesson, we have a study group every Wednesday from 1030 to 12, and they call in. And if you want to be a part of that, sub, that Sunday School study group, you need to just call in, go to our, uh, go on to our page and uh, get the flyer. Uh, but we're studying a Sunday School Lesson. We study out of the three commentaries, the Townsend Press Commentary, precepts for living the commentary and the general standard commentary. So we get the evangelical viewpoint to the standard commentary uh, of the lessons. And then we get uh, uh, urban ministries uh, viewpoint from the African-American Afrocentric uh, uh, inner city concept of what God is doing. Then Townsend Press, that is the Baptist, uh, the, 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 the ba Baptist uh, uh, press, but that commentary, the editors of the commentary are persons who have their doctorates and their PhDs and they've graduated from seminary and the university. And so you get an academic perspective of the same story. So we take all through the academic, theological, scholarly viewpoint of scripture, uh, the Afrocentric viewpoint of scripture married with then the evangelical version to get a holistic concept so that you'll be able to dialogue with everybody and have different points of view. And then from there, we bring our view and other views to the table. And so what I'm doing is suggesting that all of us, we need to be students of the word. Students where people have taught the word, they have shared with us, they've told us the story. And some of us They've told the story wrong. So some of us, we have been living our lives and believing in God and believing in what his word said and quoting certain scriptures and misquoting them and coming up with our understanding of the text. And it is not even correct. Some of it is. And then some of us got a correct understanding of the text, but we need to have a deeper revelation of the text and get into more of the mystery of the text that guide us in some of our deep areas of living. I'm excited about doing this process. And so what we are going to be doing also, one of the things when I come on every week, I'm, I really count it an honor and a privilege for those of you that follow me, those of you that tune me in every week to let you know that I am honored by that. I take this very seriously. I'm just not on just running my mouth. I, I do my research. I, I pray, ask God to give me insight. Uh, because I see this as a, an assignment for me coming on, rightly dividing the word of truth and being a voice in the land with other voices. And so I, I, I want you to be able to trust my voice and I want you to be able to go behind my voice and Google it and, and, and check it out. And if you don't, if you find that uh, you, well, I said something that was incorrect, please call me at 773-616-1951. So I, I will go back in and research because I don't know everything, but I will go back in and I will research it and I will talk about it and I will share it because I believe that is much more to know. And the more we discuss, talk and dialogue, the word of God becomes alive in our lives. Last week, we started off dealing with the book of with Joseph, the story of Joseph with his father, uh, giving him a road of, of the many colors. And last week's Sunday School lesson found us uh, with Joseph in that story uh, and found him thrown in the pit and then found him uh, sold by the Midianites, uh, the Ishmaelites, his cousins, uh, to Potiphar. And he become the chief steward of his house. Today's lesson finds us with uh, 
God giving Pharaoh a dream and, and Joseph interpreting the dream. And now he becomes uh, the prime minister as a father to Pharaoh and he's given a wife and he has two sons. So I want to take that whole scenario of those two stories and put them together. And I want to do some exegesis from this text. And I want to challenge us as we take a look at our lives, as we look at the Joseph narrative. Within the Joseph narrative are so many principles and so many things that I've discovered and found out even while studying the lesson, discussing with my group, and just looking at it again as we take a look of everyday life. Now note that. Note, uh, 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 Brother Daryl, God bless you. Also note that in this story with Joseph, I want to go back and I want to talk about the struggles that Joseph was going through as a, as a little boy. But let me segue a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, the sins of the fathers and also about how we inherit certain things. God is clear. He said, honor thy mother and thy father that, they, that thy days may be long upon the earth, visiting the iniquities unto the third and fourth generations to them that hate me. I visit the iniquities of the fathers to the third and fourth generation to them that hate me, but showing mercy to thousands of generations. We have to begin to look at our generations and some of you all that watch PBS and Bill Gates and others that, uh, you know, we're into our family history and our family tree. I found it interesting uh, as I look back at Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. And let me just say this, that as we are talking and sharing with uh, the movement and the theme and the concept of Black Lives, Ma Black Lives Matter, and issues in African-American community and issues in other communities, I'm finding out there seems to be a disconnect with certain age groups as if they stand out and they want to fight all other age groups. And then certain age groups don't want to listen to other age groups. And so we got all of this, 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 this anger and frustration and disconnection between the generations. Now, if you look at history and look at humanity, God never, God never comes in and take one generation and make a major move in one generation and complete that move. Nowhere, nowhere in the biblical text and nowhere in history that, that God takes one generation to be the be all in all and do all to any, any nation or nationality or people, even into the earth. It's always a combination of generation. It takes years for things to process. That's why even when we look at uh, the Old Testament text, we hear and see God appearing to Abraham, God appearing to Isaac, God appearing to Jacob. And then Joseph has been told that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So it, that's three generations, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's three generations before we get to Joseph, which is fourth generation. Now, if we look at generations then, within the biblical narrative, the biblical text in the New Testament, when the Holy Ghost fell, in response to Isaiah, the prophet, Joel, I'm, pro I'm sorry, it said, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Sons and daughters prophesy. The capacity to be prophetic, to prophesy, to fore or foretell is related to sonship, daughtership, to honor and to celebrate. Honor thy father and thy mother, those who are progenitors, not only those who are the seed of your, your mom and your dad, but in this process, fathers are those also who are inventors, who are uh, producers of things in the earth and the community and life that's known as the father of this is the father of this music this genre the father of this the father of this thought or the mother of that so those concepts are also merged with your natural mom and father so your sons and your daughters shall prophesy upon your handmaidens and your maid servants i'll pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy we're going to call those persons our staff 
We're going to call our maids and our maid servants, people that we work with, that we network with in our day-to-day activity of running a business that's tied into our economy. And then it said, and your young men shall see visions, your your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. So some totality of a mystery unfolded is dream vision. You cannot move with dreams and you cannot only move with vision. Dream and vision has to marry. And when there is dream and vision together, then we be able to move forward and make changes and upgrades. So we have to have dreams. We have to have old and young talking and dialoguing together with dream and vision and sons and daughters prophesying along with support staff prophesying. Elder Yancey, Apostle Yancey, God bless you. Uh, Daryl Bickman, God bless you. Uh, A.J. Brinson, God bless you. Uh, thank you as you coming on and joining us on today. And so therefore, I've got to have old and young. That's why God talks about legacy. He, the biblical texts and narratives talk, always talk about legacy. It talks about inheritance. It talks about children's children's children. And so we always have to be in this dialogue. So no one generation is held accountable for something. It's a combination of generations. Right now, Diane Lowe, God bless you. Right now, we live in a world of seven generations. There are seven living generations. Now, don't, don't, don't take my word for it. Google it. When I get off, get time, Google generations and get all the names from the silent generation to the baby boomers, to the generation Xers, you know, to the millennials, to the, you know, to the generation Z and, and to the alpha generation, you, you, you know, look them up. It's about, there's seven, Sister Darlene Lindell Smith, God bless you. There are seven living generations in the earth today. And if we're going to be effective and efficient, seven generations have to be in dialogue. So when one generation says this and one generation says that to me, now we have a saying in our communities. uh, First of all, it's not biblical for those who are biblical. I hear him saying it and it's not factual when you say that's old school. What? I don't know what old school mean. Somebody help me define what is old school. What is old school? God is not old school. There is nothing new under the sun. So from a biblical narrative, there is nothing new under the sun. So how do we come up with old school? God is alpha and omega. So how do we come up with old school? He's beginning and the end. What, what, so what is old school? What, what, what is old school? God, the, the, the narrative says to the children of Israel, Hear, O Israel, our God is one. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, all thy mind. That whole narrative. And it says, teach your children and your children's children. There are certain things, certain principles of life and living that are passed down generationally. And when there is a mislink in the generations, we have issues. When generations rise up that don't know God is because there's an issue. There's a mislink somewhere. Because in the natural side of things, DNA keeps running. DNA keeps running. Personality types keeps tracing itself down through generations and iniquity don't stop. So we need to look at that. So, you know, it's some some of us, we have been victimized by the choices of our fathers and our mothers. We don't have to choose to stay in that victimization process. We can get out. Thank God for his grace. So some of us got habits and pick up habits and some of us act certain ways in our personalities or types because in the gene pool, we pick up certain things and, and it is just a part of our character personality. And so Maxie Jackson, Jackson, God bless you. So we have to understand it. So note, note this, note this. God speaks to Abraham and tell Abraham to depart from his kindred and his people and go to a land that he will show them, right? God said, get up, pack up and get, get up, pack up, leave, get out. So he leaves, he takes Lot with him. Okay. All right. So I find it creative that when Abraham, God says to Abraham, I'm taking you to a land that I show you, but God withheld the full promise to him until Lot left him. Now, when Lot left him, what happened? When Lot left him, 
um, it says that God said, now I want you to look up into the stars and I'm going to multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. But God didn't give him that blessing until he fully followed God and released Lot. Okay, so now if Abraham had to leave his kindred and his people and his land and go to a new land and God is moving him to a new dimension people, then Abraham, when he gets older, his son Isaac is grown now. He's looking around to the daughters of the land in which God had given him and said his generation is going to come back. They're going to be strangers in the land, but I've given you the, the land. Abraham decides that he didn't want Isaac, his son, to marry any of the daughters of the land. He just didn't like the young ladies in the, in the neighborhood and in that area. He didn't want Isaac to marry any of the daughters of the land. Now, I thought, according to the biblical text, that God told Abraham to get up and leave his kindred, leave his land and everything. What did that, that was really, really, it started back, not only with Abraham, it started back with Terah. Terah was his dad. So Terah left Ur of the Chaldees and went to Haran. And when he died, God picked it up and said, come on, keep moving. Okay, so now Abraham tells Eleazar, his servant that, look, my son is marriable. He's, he's, he's at the age to be married. I do not want him dating, working with, talking with, fantasizing, or, 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 or lollygagging or hanging around these sisters in this neighborhood, in this area. I want you to go back to my homeland. Why would you go back to your homeland to get a wife for your son, second generation, when God told you to leave your homeland. See how we do? Let's look at that. So Abraham sends Eleazar back home to Ur of the Chaldees to get a wife for Isaac. God told Abraham to leave his people and his kindred and go to a land that I'm going to show you. Abraham takes Lot. Lot leaves him. God gives him a future blessing. Nash Schaefer the third. God bless you, man of God. And God gives him a blessing. And then Abraham says, I don't want my son. I don't want my son. And I don't want my son talking to the daughters of the land. I don't want him talking to the daughter. Go back to Ur. So he goes back to Ur of the Chaldeans. Well, you know, God was with Eliezer because God answered his prayer. That don't mean nothing. The question is, you disobeyed. So you took a disobedient move of going back to where God told you to leave and you moved that act into your second generation called Isaac. So Isaac gets married to Rebecca, which is a part of Abraham's past connections with his family because God is trying to take him from his family, his people, his connection, purge him from his past, his history, and all of that, and then put him in a process where he is now understanding that I'm doing something new in your life. So God wants to do something new in your life. God wants to do something new in life. He tells you to get up and move. Your, so in your second generation, wherever God took you from, now you trying to go back to. Okay. All right. So uh, you trying to go back to. All right. Sharon Peters Russ. God bless you, woman of God. So now Rebecca is caught up in the scene. And now look at it. Let's look at what happens. Let's go back in and let's see if we can say something about this. Uh, Dr. Ruff is Abraham and Sarah leaves. God, Sarah is barren. So she has no children in the land that God told her to come out of. But now God blesses her with seed in the land that he wants to give Abraham. Okay, but she was barren until God spoke and said, now I'm changing your name. I'm going to change your name to Abraham, the father of, I'm changing Sarah, which means hurt, wounded, and angry to Sarah, meaning laughter. 
and I'm going to let y'all have some fun, and I'm going to give some fruit out of the fun, called it Isaac, in a new land. He takes Isaac in the new land and sends Eliezer back to the old land to find him a co-partner, which is Rebekah. So now Isaac and Rebecca takes on the same mentality characteristics of dad, of Sarah and uh, 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 Abraham. So Isaac, so look at it. So Abraham lies and says that, um, that when we go into the land, you're going to tell people I'm your sister and not your wife. Abraham told a lie to protect himself, then protect his woman. Didn't Isaac do the same thing? Isaac told a lie and said, because you are fair and beautiful, they're going to try to kill me. So you tell them that I'm your sister. So Abraham tells that lie. First generation, second generation tell a lie. How many lies go from one generation to the next generation? It's just natural stuff. So now we look at that. So what happens? So um, what happens? Rebecca and Isaac. Now, Rebecca is barren. God shuts her womb down. You ain't nothing happening. So now uh, uh, Isaac has to pray and entreat God to touch his wife's womb so she can bear children because she was barrenness just like Sarah. See how this generational stuff go? All right. So Sarah is pregnant and there's war in her womb and things are going, oh, what's going on in my womb? This child, no. God said, you got twins. There are twins in there and uh, uh, they're fighting. There are two nations inside of you and they're fighting. And I'm one nation, I'm loving. The other one, I'm hating. They're the younger, the, the older going to serve the younger. So they come out the womb. The older going to serve the younger. So the older becomes daddy's man. He likes to go into the field and hunt and do stuff. Jacob becomes mama's boy. Jacob, he prefers to stay in tents. He can cook. He likes the other things. He stays in tents. Jacob stays in tents. Now let's go back. Isaac stayed in tents. Isaac stayed in tents and Isaac stayed with his mama for a while and he stayed in tents. Jacob stays in tents. See this connection here? So what happens? Uh, as they get older, he's, Isaac says, I'm going to bless you now. Now, I'm sure, I'm sure Rebecca had already told her husband, her testimony, that God said that the younger, that the older was going to serve the younger. But after years go down, you can testify to your husband or whatever to your wife. They don't have to listen to you. They do what they want to do. So here, I am sure, I am sure that while uh, Rebecca was pregnant, and going through these 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 wars in her womb, she told her husband that those these babies are kicking. I'm God said I was gonna have twins, and he told me that one was gonna serve the other. She didn't. I, I, she didn't keep that to herself. So he, 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 Isaac knew. So now Isaac says to his older son, "Go go get me something because I want to give you the birthright." Rebecca talking about all oh, no, all oh, snap, all oh, no no, it ain't gonna happen. I got to fix this. So I got to go get my son and set him up and teach him. He got to go lying and he going to lie and he going, you know, and he, uh, I got to fix this. Now let's look at the generational relationships because sometimes as we move in our generations, we tend to get connected to people just like our mama, just like our daddy or just like our granddaddy. Some of us, we get connected to the same characteristics. So here's Sarah she going to help God. Remember, God tells um, Abraham that he's going to have a seed and she's barren. So Sarah decides she going to help God by bringing Hagar into the picture and end up with an Ishmael because she called herself helping God. So here we go with the same situation for another sister called Rebecca. She going to help God get her son the birthright, because God had told her that the younger was going to be the top and the older was going to be at the bottom. Isaac, uh, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated, and therefore that, that Esau was going to serve Jacob. 
Sister Ludo Green, uh, Sister Martha, Apostle Mabry, God bless you, woman of God. And so, so what happens is uh, Rebecca going to help God. So Sarah want to help God. Rebecca want to help God. See, see that family stuff? Okay. Sarah lied. She said she didn't laugh. She lied. She lied. So, so we got these personalities in this family, in this family tree now. So now Jacob, he runs, he leaves, and he's going. What happens? Now in the second generation, the first generation, God tells Abraham to leave your kindred and go to a land. In his old age, he sends Eleazar, his chief steward, back to where God told him to leave to his father's house to get a wife for his son. Second generation. In the third generation, if it's already bad enough, in the third generation, Rebecca takes Jacob and sends him back to her brother's house and her father's house and sends him back home to where she came from. So now there are three generations that's made an attachment back home. The first generation, Abraham was detached. In the second generation, Abraham re reattached. In the third generation, and reattached, went back home, picked up the package, Dr. Dr. Rob O'Neill, nephew, pick up the package and bring it back to where he stayed. Now, Isaac... And, and, and Rebecca's going through issues and they're growing up with twins. And now there's some problems in the house. And so Rebecca sends her son, Jacob, the third generation, back to her house, to her brother's house. Now, in the meantime, Jacob is wrestling with the angels and God is calling him, telling him he's a slickster. Jacob is a slickster. He's a cunning. He tricked, uh, he tricked his brother told lies, you know, just like Rebecca was sneaky. And then now he's sneaky. But, but Jacob did not understand that when he went back to Rebecca's brother to the house, that there were some people in the family that was much more sneakier than he was. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? See, so, so what you understand is that in the toxicity of all of that, and I thank you, Nash, Nash says, uh, apostles describing the sovereignty of God, God moves past generational curses and family toxic, toxicity. I'm talking about while God, before I get to God moving past that, I want you to, I want you to experience the toxic, I want you to experience the toxic, the toxic. Because a lot of us are caught up in toxicity right now. A lot of us are living toxic relationships and don't understand why we in them toxic relationships. Some choices we, we made, but in the, in, the, in, the, in the midst of that, God is still sovereign. Thank you, uh, Dr. Nash Schaefer, for, for that tidbit. So, so I'm, I'm, cause I'm getting there, but I want to paint this picture that in the, in the, in the Rebecca sending uh, uh, her son back home, God told him to leave. So now he, he runs into Laban who do him straight off, messed him up straight off. Uh, uh, jo jo Joseph, uh, Jacob thought he was cutting the deal. Well, you know, I like your, your daughter. Uh, he going to cut, I'm going to lock her in right now. I'll marry her for seven, for seven years. Dad, dad said, uncle said, yeah, come on. That's fine. And then change the, change the, change the rule on him. And he ended up spending 14 years for his two wives. And then in the meantime, he ended up working for Uncle Laban. And Laban changed his wages 10 times. Every time sneaky peaky Jacob cut some deals and thought he was on top, Uncle Laban came on, on top of that. Now let's look at the toxicity of this family. Now all of that's going on. Now God speaks to Jacob and says, now it's time you to get up and get up out of here. So they leave. They snuck out of there while Uncle Laban is gone. You know, he's gone. So then he comes back and finds out he, he follows them and say, y'all, it's bad enough that y'all snuck out and left me. I didn't say bye to my grandchildren, but y'all stole from me. You stole my idols out of my house. Why were you steal? Jacob said, we ain't stole none from you. We ain't stole none from you. Oh, no. He didn't know that sneaky lion. Daddy's girl, Lee, Rebecca, had stole the stuff. 
And and he, and, and and so Jacob says to Laban, uh, uh, go on, Uncle Laban, go on in the tents if, and see if you can find it because that's an insult for you even accusing me. So when Laban goes in all the tents, he gets into Rachel tent. Rachel then already stole the stuff. She got it, hid it in some and sat on it. So when she comes in, when he comes into her tent, she said, Daddy, I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to get up and you know you searching, but you know, right now I'm on my period. The way of women is with me right now. And I'm going through some things in my body and you know, you can't be, I can't, you know. So she pulled a health move on him, lying. She set up a lie. So then we find out then that some kind of way, Rachel had a proclivity of lying because she lied to her daddy and she stole. That's in her personality. Okay, now. So now, now let's 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 kind of put all this stuff together as we move the story to uh, Joseph having kids. Now, when 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 Leah is married to uh, Jacob, uh, Uncle, Uncle Laban gives Leah his his maid. Well, why do Leah have to live with Uncle Laban, her daddy's maid? That's culture. We want to keep the culture up. So I'm going to give you my maid who works for me and serve me and understand how the culture goes to be supportive of you because you need a sister to help you through your life. So I'm going to give you my maid that's been with me serving me. I'm going to give her to you. So now, so now Leah has her daddy's maid and then Ratio, uh, he gives Ratio Laban. Rachel's daddy gives Rachel his handmaiden. So now that's the culture. And every, even though, even though Jacob is Joe, Jacob is leaving the country where God told Abraham the first generation not to be there, he got a three-generation situation of toxicity. And now he's got his two wives who are sisters. Come on now. That's a whole nother, a whole nother situation. Two sisters married one brother and the brother really wanted the younger sister. So there's issues between them already. And then each sister got a maid and a handmaiden from the daddy. So there are four women in the house. So Jacob is married to two of the women, but because of the situations, he is now having sexuality issues with four women. So four women is in the bedroom. He's in the bedroom with four women. Two of them is wife. And out of them two, that's the wife. They both sisters. And one is loved over the other one. And then the other two, the handmaiden and the maidservant is willingly given unto uh, 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 Joseph, Jacob rather. Now, you know, come on now. David Harmon, Bishop Harmon, God bless you. So now there are four women having sexual relationships with one man and the dynamics of whatever that creates. Now, there are, there are uh, 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 11 sons and a daughter come out of that relationship. So there's a family in the house. Sister Brenda Smith, God bless you. So there's a family in the house. And the family that's in this house is made up of stepchildren and children. So the combination of the extended family now is four women producing this family. And now Jacob has a son by his beloved Rachel. So for Jacob's mentality, from a cultural standpoint, Joseph is his firstborn. Dr. Barano, Dr. Lisa. So technically Joseph now is the firstborn in Jacob's mind because Leah, Rachel was the first wife he always wanted and the one that he loved. So a baby, a son from, from her, he's going to give him first position. So according to the culture situation, we understand better why now Jacob makes Joseph a coat of many colors. The coat of many colors was not only just a coat of many colors, the coat of many colors was significance 
uh, significant to the fact that he identified him over all the other brothers and sisters in the family, number one. Number two, is significant, it was significant because it put him as the having the right of the firstborn because he was the firstborn, but he was the firstborn of Rachel, not Leah. So Joseph makes a de- Jacob makes a decision that his firstborn is not going to be Reuben. His firstborn, as far as he is concerned, that he's going to bless is going to be Joseph. So he gets the coat of many colors when there are other brothers that's older than him. Now look at the dynamics there. Look at what daddy does to one of the children in the family. And look at the dynamics of the jealousy that is created and the envy that is created by that move and the toxicity that's already in the family and the varieties of personalities that's going on in the whole clan. We got some, some of us can go, some of us say, Prince, I just can't deal with my family. So much stuff going on. Uh, That nothing new under the sun, nothing new under the sun, nothing new under the sun. You're the life. (laughs) <laughs> Start looking at some of these biblical characters. I just want to bring that out. And so here in the midst of all of that, in the midst of all of that, God is saying to Abraham, I got a seed and through my seed, I'm going to work. And so the 12 tribes of Israel, because he's trying to move to Israel, but out of the, out of Israel, Israel comes out of a lot of junk. A lot of issues, a lot of circumstances, a lot of domestic issues, and a lot of other kind of stuff. Israel, Sister Jacqueline, God bless you. Out of all of that, Israel is being formed as a nation that he's going to give special attention to and move this nation out of which in 42 generations, Jesus is coming. So all of these things of the, the sovereignty of God is still active and then being displayed while at the same time, the natural day-to-day activity of the dysfunctional situations and, 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 and things that don't make sense, the oxymoron, 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 and all the other kinds of things, oxymoron, and all the other things that's happening in our lives and the conflicts and the dubious distinctions of stuff that don't make sense. It's all in our lives. And we can get preoccupied by toxins and all the stuff that's happening. Or we can look past all that and say, so what, what is God doing? What is God saying? We can look at it right now in America. We can look at Trump and all this other stuff and the Black Lives Matter and all the other issues and the killing and the this and that. And in the midst of all of this dysfunctional situations of our neighborhoods and what's happening, what, where, where is the activity of God? Or as, as theologians say, if things are so, why is things so bad if God is active? The question of theodicy, where is God in the midst of the conflict? in the midst of the, the, the devastation, if there is a God, there couldn't be a God, because if it was, this would have been happening. Where is God? That's called theodicy. The question of theodicy, ask us that question in the midst of the vicissitudes and the challenges of life, where is God? Well, somehow God is at work. God is at work. God is at work. He's doing some things. He's positioning some things. He's training some things and he's making ready for some things that has to happen and become a part of. So in the story last week, we saw our Jacob, um, he, 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 he had some dreams now. So if we take both stories together. Jacob moves from being a dreamer to later on in his life, interpreting dreams. See, what happens is some of us, what you don't understand is some of us, God gives you a gift and you are gifted in certain areas, but after he takes you through the turmoil of life and the frustrations and the disconnects of life, somehow you find, Sister Jacqueline, God working to expand your gifting to another dimension. So Jacob starts out being a dreamer, telling his dream, but Jacob did not have the capacity to interpret the dream. So he goes through these years. It takes some years, 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 years of going through this, being lied upon, being accused upon, going through prison and all that kind of thing, still working his administrative gifts and all that other stuff to get to the point when it's time God drops down into him a call for a need that he has become specialized in. Now, so, so therefore I need you all that have gifts 
not to not 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 to did, did, you know be upset about days of small beginnings. I need you to take your gift and put it in the gym of activity. Let God stretch you, develop your gift and keep developing it because God is always going to use your gift, your character, your personality to continue to move you where you got to go. Today we were on our talk show, on our on our talk uh, and, and the overseer Derek was on sharing and he made a statement. He said, God is always preparing us for our next move. God is always preparing us for our next move. I am always in preparation, whether I go through judgment, whether I go through discipline, being whooped, whether I get some joy, some excitement with all of my life, everything that I do to everything. There's a season, a time and a purpose, all of the juxtapositions of life and everything that I find myself in life. God is always preparing us for our next move. So everything is important. Felicia, God bless you. Everything is important. Everything is important. Whatever you're going through. So some, you know what you need to begin to do as you look at your life and you see what you're in. You just say, hmm, I wonder, hmm, I wonder what my next move is. God is up to something. I wonder what he's up to. I, I can keep hope alive because somehow I can keep hope alive, which brings me into some faith because faith is the substance of things hopeful. I don't see it, but I see around me. But God is up to something. I come to tell you, I come to tell you that God is up to something. What is happening? As we look at the life of Joseph, God is up to something. So God is up to something. I, and I know I'm not going to finish this. I know I'm not going to finish it. I'm probably going to have to do maybe a part two to taking a look at Joseph and his life. Uh, uh, Brother Daniel, God bless you coming on. But but see, so what happens? Let's go back now. So now Jacob makes Joseph a coat of many colors because some because he loved him and he wanted him and he positioned him. You know, sometimes our parents want to live through us. Sometime in our lives, in our communities, in our families, we, we are given titles and positions. And also we've given special attention. And we come up with this situation of uh, I'm entitled, certain things of entitlement and other things we get because in a position of family issues and structure, it, it's just something that we inherit. So Jacob is living through Joseph by making him uh, the chief. But inside of that, there's some other things that's happening in Joseph. Joseph learns how to become administrative. So the coat of many colors in that culture said that he stood in a position of administration and leadership of his brothers. And the coat came all down to his hand. So Jacob, Joseph didn't keep no sheep. The brothers kept the sheep. The brothers did the work. Joseph walk around chilling out with a robe of many colors, looking good and uh, having dreams and articulating and discussing. And it said the brothers envied him and they it, it got to the point that they couldn't stand even talk to him. They 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 won't eat, they couldn't talk with him without fussing, fighting, and argument. Who am I talking to in your family? You go to family meetings and stuff, and there's always gonna be a fight or some folk can't they can't they can't speak to you without trying to argue with you. Jacob is Joseph is in that situation already in a situation with four women having sex with his dad. And all of these people coming out of these babies coming out of four and everybody's position, jockeying for a position along with all that other stuff. And his granddaddy and, and, and his grandmama and his uncle and all them, all them in the neighborhood. All that's part of his narrative It's part of his 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 personality is in his genes. And we talked about uh, the sins of the fathers and and the generational curse and the generational blessing. Just like you have generational curse, you have generational blessings. So some of y'all, why you want to be negative on your generations, you need to go back to your mama, your grandfather, and your great grand and find out what are the blessings that run in my family lines and take advantage of that. Uh, bro, Sister Kimball, uh, brother Brown, Sister Kimball Brown. So you need to go back and say what are the positive things in my in, in my background and my family and my history. I know it's easy to find out the negative things 
and say the bloodline curse. Yeah, but there's some bloodline blessings. So here we live with the bloodline curse and the bloodline blessings all intermingled with the toxicity of the community, not only the community, but the neighborhood, the area, the geographical area. Uh, a, a part of our ethnos of who we are as a nation of a people based upon also our domestic challenges and situations of life. All of that is in the mix. All of that is in the stew of my humanity. And yet God is still stern and working. He's still stern and working. He's still stern and working. So what happens? Jacob becomes, Joseph becomes daddy's boy, the snitch. So they hated Jacob. I mean, they hated Joseph. I'm getting my J's again. They, they hated, Joseph's brothers hated him because when he went out in the field to be with his brothers, it seemed like he would be learning how to bond with his older brothers, you know? The younger brother coming in with us, we into stuff. We're going to teach the younger brother how to be, and he go on, go home and tell daddy everything we did. Y'all remember that? Y'all yeah, yeah, remember that, Michael, Miss Wayne? Y'all remember that? Yeah, some of y'all young people, you know, some of your some of the brothers and some of the sisters, you remember way back when 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 you used to date and you had can I go over to Jimmy's house or Sue's house? Or could I go to the park? Mom, them say, yeah, but take little Johnny with you. You be like, oh boy, damn, why well, I gotta no. Mom knew what she was doing. Dad knew what she was, what he was doing when he said, you could go but take your little sister with you, your little brother with you, because you knew you couldn't do all the stuff you're going to do by yourself, because when you go out there and do and say what you said, as soon as they get home, Ma, so-and-so said this, so-and-so said that, <laughs> the Smith, God, so-and-so said, <laughs> boy, them, them kids be telling on you, boy, they, they telling on you. I'm going to tell on you. I'm going to tell Or they cut a deal. They 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 blackball you. Well, how much money you get? If not, I'm going to tell mama. I'm tell dad. So he, Joseph was like that. Who wants a brother that go out, that the daddy send with you somewhere, and he comes back with an evil report? Okay, so that was part. So not only did he have a dream, and it was confusing. They couldn't stand him. He was a snitch, and he was daddy's definition. So he became daddy's creature this this joseph was a creation of daddy god says i got to get that out of you because i'm always preparing you for your next move so it's time for me to make start moving you because you on the time you on kairos time kairos time is god's timing and matters in life chronological time is our day to day life uh, seconds, minutes, uh, hours, weeks, uh, hours, days, weeks, months, and years. Chronological time, TikTok time. Kairos time is activity time of time that goes in consult, goes in keeping with God's will, His sovereignty, His activity in the matter of our chronological time. So when chrono, when chrono, when Chronos chronological and chronos intersects kairos 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 and chronos is always in dialogue but kairos is what god is doing chronos says what is happening in the time frame in the year that king Azai died chronos i saw god kairos and so in the kairotic time of god in the midst of the chronos uh elder lisa and, and 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 sister my sister Linda Granger in the midst of that uh, uh uh God says okay you you this thing that was made by your daddy I'm gonna put you in the process because it's time for you to change so what they do they're gonna kill him no you can't kill him. we're gonna strip him they stripped him of his robe his robe was symbolic of character position entitlement and all the things that went with his robe his brothers and his brothers saw his robe as a definition of who he was and the robe and who he was was put together. And when they first decided to come after him, the first thing they did was to tear off his robe. Well, you know, clothes don't make the man. Oh, I, oh hey, I don't know where you get that from. 
Why well, I mean, it ain't all in the clothes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dress and clothes has something to do. Oh, yes, it does. So, uh, you know, some of this stuff that y'all be saying that, that your ideology is com incomplete, your philosophical understanding, clothes do make the man. We used to say when we was growing up, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not biblical. That's not philosophically correct. How many people, it talks about the tongue being the little member of the body to set the whole course of hell on fire by a word we gone to war by a word you know come on somebody so we always saying these little catchphrases and don't investigate some of them don't even mean they please anyway let me go on y'all got me going okay dr lisa yeah y'all got me happy but sister let's, let's look at it this so the first thing they do is they strip joseph of his robe and put him in a pit I'm gonna take your yo, I'm gonna take your title from you, your position, your entitlement, what makes you feel like you somebody in the free world. I'm gonna take it from you. Then I'm gonna put you in a pit where you ain't free. Now God, God, God position. Now, 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 now here they go. They take Joseph out of the pit, Dr. Steve Edwards. They 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 take Joseph out the pit and sell him to the Ishmaelites, to the Midianites, which was his cousin, his cousins. So your family is still selling. Your, who sold you? Who made a move for you? Sometime a, a, a negative relationship that moves you into a geographical area is God's blessing really preparing you for your next. You need to look at somebody and say, my now is not my next. My now is not my next. It came to pass and not to stay. And my now is, I, you know, I'm frustrated about my now. I can't make even any sense out of my now. But even in the midst of my now, I can keep hope alive because this too shall pass. It came to pass and not to stay because my now is a season for my next. Joseph, jo Joseph gets down there and to Potiphar's house. He gets down there. Guess what? because he has administrative gifts. Let me say something to you, my brothers and my sisters. Do not despise the day of small beginnings and always celebrate your gifting, your gift, talents, and graces that you were born with, your gifts, your talents, and graces that you were born with. Celebrate and protect them. Fight to keep them because no matter where you are and who you are, God will always use what is innate in you to get you where you got to go. Good, bad, ugly. So one of the things that Joseph had, they took his coat from him, they put him in the pit, but they couldn't take away his administrative skills that his daddy put in him. And so when he got when he got in there over to Potiphar's house, he his administrative skills kicked in and he ended up being what? The chief steward of Potiphar's house. Now here we go again with 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 with, with, with clothing. So now Joseph now is the master steward of Potiphar's house, which means guess what, Lorenzo? Guess what? Guess what, Marlene? God, God, guess, guess, guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Joseph gets another robe. He gets a cloak. Now he had one robe of many colors, was jacked up by his daddy. God took that. Now God is always preparing you for the next move. He's living in proud of Pharaoh's house, but because of him being smart, he was handsome, he was smart. What that happened? Part of Pharaoh put everything in his hands, gave him responsibilities, and with his responsibilities came a wardrobe change. I told y'all, some of y'all got a God and change your perspective. He didn't upgrade you, but you ain't upgraded your wardrobe. You still looking like a yesterday. Because you're afraid of what people say and how people look at you, you will take yesterday's clothes and wear them in today's blessings. Y'all, come on, don't y'all get me started. I was thinking about that in our today's lesson. Y'all got, got me said wigging back and forth. I said to them as I was teaching the lesson today, and my time is up, and I'm going to take five more minutes on this, and then we're going to go on to part two next week. Guess what? Joseph was Jewish. Now he already went through some situations of clothes change. His 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 robe of many colors was taken from him. Clothes.
title, position, and all that. He gets to Potiphar's house. He's got a cloak on, which is a symbolic of his authority. And Potiphar's wife, Potiphar's wife, uh, the sister of Prophet Loretta Pickett, Potiphar's wife tried to get to him and grab his cloak. And he got out of his cloak and he ran. So that's the second piece of clothing. He was stripped from his first coat, which was position, title, and all his definition because God was preparing him for his next move. And then when it got time for his next move, he had to get out of the cloak that def defined him in his position because the woman of God, the, not the woman of God, the woman of part of Pharaoh's wife was coming after him and he wanted to stay clean and stay close to what God said. So he lost his next garment, the next cloak. Then he goes to jail. And he got a cloth, he got a set of clothes on him, but his administrative gifts kick in again. So when he gets administrative gifts, gifts kick, kick in, the warden likes him, and now he gets changed. So he don't wear the same clothes everybody in the jail wear. His clothes change to another kind of clothes because he's living in an honor dorm with the with the with the politician prisoners, the political prisoners. So he got another change of clothes. Every time you notice every time God moves you to a next move, he wants you to change your clothes, your surroundings, who you do, what you do. You, you know, one of the mistakes we make, we want God to bless us and take us to another level, but we want to bring our yesterday stuff to that level. God said, no, 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 no. I'm going to do a new thing with you. New ideas, new mindsets, new surroundings, everything, but we want to hold on. That is an insult to what God is trying to do to us in our lives for us to hold on to our yesterday when God says it ain't about your yesterday. It's about where you are today, and today I'm preparing you for your next. So what happens? So what happens? So now when finally God says, now nah, I'm going to take what you are, brother Lorenzo. I'm going to take who you are, your gifts and talents of administration. Now I have matured you from just being a dreamer to now only to expand upon your gift of dreaming, to take your gift and move it to another level to interpret what has been dreamt. A lot of people can dream. I got a dream and dreams and visions go together. But if I don't have a, a, a person who can strategize to interpret the mystery of my dream and my vision, I am shortchanging my movement to my tomorrow. So now Joseph going through the process of God preparing him from a dream, a dream maker to a dream interpreter at the same time, because in the prisons, nothing comes to nobody. They sleep, eat and fart. They just sleep around it. So in the prisons, he's around there interpreting dream. He was using, he put his talents and gifts in the gym of activity. Somebody I'm talking to on the day. Your gifts and talents and abilities are, are given to you by God for you to exercise, exercise, exercise. Come out of that milk mentality. Exercise. Grow you some teeth. Exercise. Stop trying to hang around folk that make you comfortable. Get out there because God is always preparing you for your next move. They said they saw that the Lord was with Joseph and the Lord prospered his hand. So now he got to go stand before the king because now when God wants to make a move, when God wants to make a major move in your life, what do he do? He always sends an opportunity for you to utilize what's already in you. Joseph was gifted. The boy could, the boy could interpret dream. God said, the only thing I need to do is put before Joseph that which he can solve. Uh, Joseph got answers to a lot of things. So the only thing I need to put before Joseph is a question that he always got answers to. Don't you mess with me today. Some of y'all walking around life with answers to, to, to questions and answers to situation. And the only thing God do is drop a question in front of you that you say, oh, I can answer that. And out of the things of what you are and who you are, making answers out of the of what you do. I just said this. Yeah. I mean, and when you did that, I promoted you and you had to come out of your robe again. So there was another robe change because now he had to go before Pharaoh. So he had to come out of the prison garb. He had to shave his head and wash his face and put on that little tad thing and get a little ponytail on his head. Brent said, I ain't doing that. I'm shaving. I love the law. I ain't going to hang. No, some of y'all need to change your look. Huh? Some of y'all need to change your look. I, well, Brent said, I was on my hair. Well, dye it. Dye it. Go get a new hairstyle. Go. Throw you a new wig on. Get you some weed. Brothers, cut your beard or get a beard. And, and you know, get you a little mustache. Start looking like who you are. 
What's inside of you? Well, I couldn't tell based upon what you look like. And what does leadership look like? Define it for you. What does a prophet, a man, a woman of God look like? Define it for you. What is God doing for you? Define it for you. How did God take you out the miry clay and put you on a rock to stay? Define it for you. Tell your story. Stop listening to other people's stories, trying to make your story. Come on out. This too shall pass. So we caught up in this toxicity, caught up in the iniquities of our families and uh, our communities and situations and just keep on talking about it. Oh, no, no, no. There's something down on inside of me. If I reach deep in me, that God is at work. Dr. Schaefer told me God is sovereign. He's at work doing things. He's needing things together, putting stuff together, having stuff put. The, woo, good God Almighty. And so what is happening to us? God said in the midst of the pandemic and the midst of what's going on, don't you get caught up and preoccupied in your isness because, and don't you keep on talking about your wasness. Tell wasness to get to stepping and tell isness, stop talking to wasness because wasness is no longer. I've got to understand that even the alpha meganess of me, I'm moving you from my, my, my beginning to a middle point to go to an end because I know the plans I have for you. Good things are not of evil. So you got to understand, you got to upgrade your friends, upgrade your, your, your conversation, upgrade what you work on. And I say, I, I got to get out of here. I, I ain't going to never finish. I ain't going to never finish. So I'm going to say, so when I was reading the Sunday school lesson today, it said something to me and I said, my, 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 my. It said that what happened was that not only that, it says that sometimes we have to identify with the symbols and the power that God promotes us. And so let me read. It says, therefore, Joseph, and this is coming out of the commentary, the Sunday school commentary from Townsend Press on page uh, 19 of the Sunday school. As he said, therefore, Joseph was selected for the position. And once again, his career was in ascendancy. Some of y'all look like your career is going down. That was just part of it. Be not weary and well doing for in due season, Veronica. We shall reap if we faint not, Sister Lisa. So therefore, that's why we got to have sons and daughters who are submitted to prophesy. That's why we need to hang around the family groups of sons and daughters that shall prophesy. We've got to hang around maids and handmaids that can prophesy. We got to hang around dialogue between old and young, between young seeing visions, old dreaming dreams. And out of the, out of the context of all of those activities, there's a prophetic word that for us and where we are, what we got to do in the midst of our vicissitudes, God comes in the magnitude of our of his power and change uh, our aptitude that moves us on a higher altitude and out of gratitude we can say thank you in the midst of the magnitude of his power so here we go just as a prophet just as Potiphar trusted him with everything in his house so Pharaoh would trust him with everything in his realm once again to the speechless Joseph Pharaoh says that he is placed over the whole land of Egypt. Signs. Now get this, you all. This is T. This is key. Signs of office and privilege follow. These signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands. If God gives you a promotion on you in your office, who you are in your life, he expect you to pick up the signs and symbols of that promotion. That's where we fail at. We want God to promote us and bless us, but we want to keep the old stuff, them old tools, and them old tools don't work no more. God got you digging in a whole nother territory. So what it is, it says here, once again, to the speechless Joseph, Pharaoh says that he is placed over the whole land of Egypt, signs of office and privilege follows. What? A ring, a gold collar, and fine linen garments. Joseph is now allowed a fine chariot. Some of y'all need to get rid of your hoopties. Uh, don't match your assignment. A fine chariot with people running before him. That came with the promotion and the office. I come to challenge you, KK, and the rest of them based upon God's promotion of you and based upon the office that you walk in, the anointing, the office that you walk in. What is the symbol and signs of your authority? How do you live? How do you act? What do you wear? What is your gait? What is your posture? Is it a reflection? God said, be ye holy as I am holy. His holiness is correct. His holiness is excellence. His holiness is creativity. His holiness is intuitive. His holiness brings about judgment, brings about change, and brings about movement. So when God upgrades your 
personality. He's expecting you to download the new software for you to move forward. That's the story of Joseph. That's the story of Joseph. I once was blind. Now I see. So stop stumbling around. Stop acting like you blind. What is it about us? And so I'm just so happy y'all got me all going. I ain't finished. So we're going to tune in next week to part two. We're going to continue to talk about Joseph. We're going to look at the personality and character of Joseph. I'm looking at his psycho, socioeconomic, biological, spiritual understanding. We need to begin. Would, I need you all to begin to take a look at the characters of the biblical narrative. Take a look at the characters. Start looking at the toxicity in their life. God's still moving. Look at their, mind, at their mindset. What was the psychology and their mental stamina? Their social, what was the social things going around? What was happening in their environment? What was going on with it? Biologically speaking, how was they? I mean, you know, Elijah and Moses, they couldn't have been weak people because they kept climbing up the mountain to see what God had to say. And some of y'all can't even go up three flights of steps. So that means they had to be healthy. Come on. So we got to understand the stamina and, and of a person. We got to understand how they understood God's word, how they hear them. All of those factors go into understanding the, the character, the biblical character in the narrative, and then draw from it the principles for everyday living for uh, ourselves and for others. And when you begin to do that, God give you a word. You get a word. You got a word. You can tell. You can share. You can be a life coach. Well, you know, I got called to the ministry and I'm a female and the men won't let me preach. Oh, the men won't let you preach in the church. Be, they won't let you in the pulpit. Go get you a tree. Now, what, what did Deborah do? Deborah sat up under a tree and all of Israel came and judged. She judged Israel, not from the pulpit, not from the palace. Prophet Deborah in the Old Testament scriptures, she judged Israel from her tree. Nah. So don't let a pulpit, and in our ministry, especially in our communities, we say we call to the ministry, and as Dr. Bradshaw always say, yeah, but we always define ministry from a pulpitarian perspective. Well, what you've been called to the ministry, when you're going to preach your trial sermon? That's a poor preacher. Everybody's not a preacher, but you still have a ministry. Go make disciples. And some of these pulpits, you don't want to be in no way. Because it, it's a bad reflection on you because you in the pulpit. Or you over there, you, 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 hey. And some of you trying to get in pulpits, that them folk ain't going to listen to you. They may not be at the level. You can in there and they won't, you only understand nothing you say. You get, so you better go into, you better go into the marketplace. Go into the marketplace. Let God do that to you. Now, remember, when, if you're going to do the church thing, the church thing is everything. There's three things about church. There's being church. There's doing church and there's having church. And all of that is about church, the body of Christ. The body of Christ is the church. The kingdom of God is implemented by the church. Without the church, there is no kingdom implemented. Thy kingdom come through the church. So there are three aspects of church. Number one, I can do church. When I do church, I'm doing all of the structural, uh, foundational things. I'm having meetings. I'm, I'm going to my Bible class. I'm being trained. I'm getting my doctrine, everything that I'm doing church, equip the church to do the work of the ministry. So in order to equip the church to do the work of the ministry, we got to do church, do churches, teaching and training and organizational life and structural life and all those things. It's the whole governmental side of the teaching doctrinal side of church. That's doing church. Now, we got to do that. All of us have to be involved in some kind of way of doing church. Then you got to have church. Child, we had us in church. Having church is the worship celebrational life of a people that belongs to God. So when I have church, I get to worship. I get to share. I get to, I get to praise and worship. I get to do what Paul said, singing and making melodies in my heart and with others. I get to uh, be in covenantal relationships with my brothers and sisters because I'm having church. It's the church in covenantal relationships, growing and sharing and nurturing each other. And then after that, I not only must, what I say, uh, I must do church. Not only must I do church, I must have church, but then I must be church. 
I got to be the church. I got to be church. I got to be the church to make disciples. Go make disciples. I got to be church. I got to be the bride. I got to be the Christ in me. I got to be active. So I have to be the church. And as I am being the church, I've got to do church so I can get ministered to what I need to do in doing church to be equipped as church. And then I got to have church. There's always a celebrational life. God never allows us to work, 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 work without resting and celebrating. So remember, until I meet again, church, the body of Christ, keep on being church, sharing, keep dealing with truth and justice and righteousness, keep on being the church. But at the same time, don't forget that you got to stop a while and do church. You got to get training. You got to get upgrade. You got to connect with doctrine and process and ordinances and laws. You got to understand the word and all. And then you got to have church. You got to celebrate. You got to give thanksgiving. And so we thank God. The life of Joseph, part one. Until next time, the life of Joseph, part two, will be on. Same time. Next say, next station, same time. Oh, by the way, my publicist just got in contact with me. My book, Sins of Iniquity. Iniquity, Sins of the Fathers. Iniquity, Understanding Generational Curses and Sins of the Fathers. The little book I just wrote, we in the second, we in the second printing, is now available on Amazon. Thank God is on Amazon. You can pick up the book on Amazon. Go to Amazon.com. Put in Dr. Sylvester Paul Branson III and pick up my little book. Go get the book. Go order the book. Understand more about Joseph. Understand about iniquities. Understand about bloodline curse and bloodline blessings. Within the, the book uh, is a process of understanding what iniquities is. Remember, we talk about it in the book. An act, an act becomes a habit. And a habit continue becomes a lifestyle. Once it becomes a lifestyle, it enters into my blood gene protocol of who I am. And it runs into my bloodline gene pool and becomes a part of my personality typing. And I pass it on generationally. So is my blessing. So within that book is also a prayer, some, a prayer to be prayed for you to be released from bloodline curses and things that, that affect you as a prayer in there that you can work out and be healed and delivered and set free. Get the book, Iniquities, Understanding Generational Curses and the Sins of the Fathers, available on Amazon as of today. Thank God. And so until next time, those that need to call me, my number is 773-616-1951. That's the year I was born. Thank God. September the 30th, I'll be celebrating 69 years of life, 69 years of life, 50, 52 years of ministry. But 773-616-1951, give me a call. You want to send, a, send us, uh, uh, some say, Brinson, you never put out where you can, where we can send you. Well, my, you know, cash app, cash app is Tabernacle 7, the number 7. Tabernacle 7 is my cash app. My Zelle account is my telephone number, 773-616-1951, Hope Outreach Ministries International. Or you go on Giblify, Hope Outreach Ministries International. Or you go on our website, www.thebrinsoninstitute.com. Go to our donation page and go to us by PayPal. Those are other areas, and we thank God for you you and you. And so until next time, next time, next time, don't forget amazon.com. Go to amazon.com and get the book, get the book, get the book. Until next time, God bless you and be blessed again and again and again.